Welcome back everyone. Just an update on the spark app assemblies that I've got under construction. Uh, before I do that, as usual, I've got a few parts and toys that I've accumulated, so I'll just run through those quickly with you. Um, I've got this pressure activated switch here. Um, starts at about 700 kPa or 100 psi. I don't think I'll have any applications over 100 psi, so it might be useful as some sort of um, pressure limiting switch. Um, also got my hands on an argon gauge and flow meter, a little ball flow meter and a little regulator on the end here. Um, that'll come in handy later on down the track. Also picked up a little 110 to 750 volt high voltage probe. Um, it's already come in useful for things that my multimeter has not been capable of measuring in the high frequency range. Um, so that's a useful little old school, I think it's an automotive high voltage probe of some sort. Uh, but who knows. Anyway, useful. The other thing that I got was this 20 amp, 240 volt um, timer. It is old school, it's all mechanical. Uh, you adjust these little tabs to where you want to turn on and off, and it just comes around and hits these spring loaded lugs here and switches it on and off mechanically inside here. And there's the input and outputs. Um, so that's that. I also picked up a little high voltage, mini high voltage power supply. Um, inputs somewhere between 6 to 12 volts and obviously as you increase the um, voltage the output increases as well. Uh, I think the output's somewhere between the 6 to 15 kV depending on the input voltage. So it's a useful little mini HV power supply. Um, I also picked up this high voltage power supply which will give us 25 kV at 1 milliamp. It's also got a couple of other outputs. Um, it's got two at 5 to 8.3 kV and an, another one at um, 180 to 780 volts. Um, so there's the three high voltage ones. The 780 volt output is just this red lead here. And yeah, it's just really like a little flyback transformer out of a TV set, but more of an industrial scale. Um, it's actually got a little circuit board in here and a little miniature flyback transformer. And the majority of that case is just one big epoxy filled um, voltage multiplier module, it looks like. Uh, so that was that is going to be used pretty soon. Um, I will be doing something with that shortly. Uh, what else have I done? I've also built myself a little LED and neon light board so that when we get the longitudinal energy um, device running again, we can show that we can run LEDs for they're all in series. Uh, and neon lights in series. Little input lead here off to this terminal block. Um, it's just mounted on a piece of ceramic bakelite. Um, so you can see in there, it's all wide in series. And I should really get the macro out on this, but you might be able to see If you look closely at the um, anodes and cathodes of the LEDs, you'll notice that I've purposely put some of them pointing in the wrong direction to show that it doesn't matter which way uh, the LEDs are facing, they're going to light up in series with the neon globes. Um, 
I've also got this two color LED here on the end so that we can choose between one color or the other color uh, by just choosing either one of these as the input or use that as the input and connect a bit of capacitance to either one of these and maybe being able to alter the color of that LED. Um, so that's that. A bit of a zoom on that. Um, when we get that up, that system up and running, we'll be able to fire it up. Um, I've also cut up this magnetron here. I don't know if many people have actually gone to the effort of doing this. So this is what a magnetron looks like um, inside the big aluminium heatsink that it's in when you pull it out of the microwave. And you obviously got the two magnets on either end of it. If we cut that open, we can actually see the resonant cavities inside. Um, I'll get the macro lens on that so you can get right in there and have a look. It's interesting enough to take 10 seconds to take a look in there. Um, so you can see all of the resonant cavities in there. Uh, there is an electrode, you can see it right there, poking out through the hole, attached to one of the cavity plates, um, and that just goes, you can see the dark line that sort of pokes straight down into the centre there. That is actually the electrode going out to the end, which goes out to this section here, which is isolated from the main chamber. By this piece of ceramic. So anyway, I thought that was interesting enough to show you resonant cavities inside a magnetron. Okay, so back to the spark gap assemblies. I'll just sit you up down here. Get that going. Okay, so what we're looking at here is the first and main air quenched spark gap assembly. Uh, this part here is the air quenching side of things. This little unit here is the main electrode um, and this is the acrylic, uh, sorry not acrylic, uh, ceramic bake light standoff. Uh, so I'll bring you in a bit closer. Uh, so over here this is the regulator, which allows us to control the air pressure going into the quenching electrode. Uh, we've also got a filter here so that we can remove any moisture out of the line just before it heads into the electrode. Um, then it goes into these adjustable flow valves here and the line comes straight out electrically isolated to the main quenching electrode. Um, just so you can have a quick look at that in a bit more detail. That's what it looks like. Um, there is a main jet that comes out of the middle and then a lot of little fins around the circumference with a little mini jet between each fin. I uh, don't know if you can see that. Um, and under that joiner section there, I've just weld. Oh, I've had my friend weld a couple of bolts. Uh, weld the bolt head straight to the to the base of that, and then it's just drilled and tapped into this ceramic bake light um, standoff. And I've got a 40 kV cable going off to this porcelain terminal block here, and that pretty much forms that main electrode. The second electrode is actually going to be mounted on this sliding stage here. Um, I've got to mount this piece of bake light onto this sliding stage. Uh, I also have this um, adjuster here which will mount straight onto the end here with one big M8 bolt um, 
or set screw and it'll I'll just replace this with a longer threaded rod and just by turning the handle on the end backwards and forwards we'll be able to slide this backwards and forwards and this is what's going to hold the main electrode which will be here. Um, I will also have a spring connecting this to this so that when we pull it back this thing will just automatically pull back under tension. Um, and that will finish off that main spark gap assembly. I've also got some other spark gap assemblies that I'm making. Um, this is also made out of ceramic bakelite. Oh, actually before I get to that, I've got more electrodes that I can connect to this air quenched assembly. Um, I've just made a whole bunch of different types so that I can test different types of airflow, air pressure, all that sort of stuff. Um, so that's the, the four different types that I've got there. Um, Alright, the other spark gaps that I'm making, this is actually ceramic bakelite, it's just the holder for the electrodes. Um, so you just have to imagine what it's going to look like. Imagine that's an electrode. And, hang on. There we go. So we've got two electrodes in there, something like that. Um, but they won't be on the back. They'll be just drilled probably about 20 millimetres down in the centre, straight through. Um, so it'll look something like that. Uh, but what I will be doing is magnetically quenching them with a couple of magnetron um, magnets. So there'll be one on either side and the electrodes will point through the middle. Um, you can see there's a gap there and I've also drilled holes into the base. Um, and I've got these clamped here just because these will just try and pop straight out. So I've just got them clamped there just to show you what it's going to look like. Um, on the inside of the magnets, because they're going to be so close to the electrode, I'll put a thin sheet of um, ceramic bakelite to insulate the magnets from the discharge in the spark gap. Um, I've also been considering using that hole as a direct line to um, feed air through the base and having the air come up and also air quenching or having the option of air quenching this spark gap so that it's not only magnetically quenched but air quenched as well because um, when I put those plates on the inside I'm not going to cut a hole out of them um, I'm actually going to just put a solid disc of um, ceramic bake light on, on the face, on the inside face of each magnet so um, it'll be fully sealed, the only way for the air to exit will be across the top here um, so yeah, that's something that I'm considering doing, strongly considering. Uh, I think it'll be worthwhile testing that out. So yeah, I've got that one there, and I've also got another one here. Um, so I'll be pretty keen to finish off these two spark caps, this one here, and this one here. And then we're going to be pretty much ready to test our longitudinal device under very controlled conditions. Um, that's pretty much it for the spark gaps. Thanks for watching. Um, stay tuned for the next video. See you next time.